God bless you, oh, my brothers and my sisters <clears throat> in, <clears throat> in Christ Jesus. Excuse me. Uh, we are in Savior Son, and we praise God. I thank him for another day, another week, that he'll smile on us and certainly always send the sentiment. Uh, may not be great English, but uh, it's, it's correct. God are good. Matter of fact, good all the time. And certainly we are indebted to him for allowing us to see another day, another year, another week, another opportunity to get right on today <clears throat> that we didn't get right on yesterday. Certainly when we uh, thank God, we greet each one of you in the marvelous, majestic, um, mighty name of him who does things well. To all of our new hopingans, to all of our friends and family, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, uh, who shares with us each time during this week, Shannon, we are grateful for you. I just want you to take a quick moment out and call or text, uh, inbox, a uh, church member, or a family member, friend, and uh, let them know that uh, this is the weekly ministry uh, Bible uh, study is on here at the New Hope Church. That it would do them good not only on today, uh, but in the days to come. Certainly, our prayers goes out to all of our sick and shed in within our church family, in our community, uh, certainly uh, throughout this nation and world. Those who have asked us to pray for them, certainly on our prayer request list. Uh, Lord, we thank you that he already knows uh, the conditions that they know even when uh, don't call, try to call each name, but certainly God knows you by name. He knows us by our condition. And so we're praying for you. And we want you to know that uh, you just look not to the his, but to him who made the his. That regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of whatever the disease that may have you at a disease, that he is a present helper, that he's still our help in ages past and our hope for days to come. And certainly we want you to know he's still a healer. All bereaved families, uh, the, the, the deaf angel been, vis been busy this year. But we will know that, we want you to know that he's still, God is still able, regardless of the infinites, the hurt, the loss, that he alone is able, <coughs> excuse me, to fix it and to soothe whatever that is aching us. Uh, let us pray gracious and all wise God, our Father, we come today just as we are. We come leaning and we come dependent, we come trusting. And you, we thank you for this another day's journey, another day that you kept us up until this present moment. And Father, you smile on us. You still be good to us. We're indebted to you, Lord. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for being our dwelling place in all generations. Even before the mountains was born, even before you gave birth to the world and to the earth, you are still God. You are everlasting, and we're thankful for you just being who you are. Look on us now, O oh Father, with our pity, our compassion. Look on us, that God forgive us of all of our sins, <clears throat> whether they be commission or omission. Have mercy upon us right now. Father, there ever was a time that we need you. We need you right now. Oh God, we pray right now that you'll strengthen us where we're weak and continue to build us up that we're spiritually torn down. As we yield our will to your will, to continue to have thy way, oh God, you are the potter, and we are the clay. But well, we ask God that you will forgive us now. Continue to own us as your children. Look on us, oh God. And when you look, whatever that is wrong, whatever that is contrary to your will, <clears throat> pray right now that you will forgive us now. Cast in the sea of forgiveness, forgiveness. 
that it may not rise and condemn us on this side, nor when we stand at the beam of seat. Bless us now, God, and the blessings that we all stand in need of individually and then collectively. I pray, God, that you will bless our church family. Bless the members one by one. Bless them name by name. God, we pray that you will bless each household that is an attentive to this ministry on today. Bless them in a special way. Pray, God, for the household of faith to hold us, continue to give us the boldness to stand, even when we have done all, to stand anyhow. Bless us now. God, we're praying for mankind everywhere, those who are less fortunate than we are. Praying, God, for those who are in the civic, those who are in uh, uh, leadership, those who are over us uh, in our government. Pray your blessings upon them right now. Pray, God, uh, those who are in uh, protecting, who's in public service. Praying, God, for our policemen, our firefighters, our first responders. God, I lift up those who are in our educational system schools throughout this thing. God, touch them right now, whatever position, whatever the, the, they hold and do, God, we pray that you smile on them, bless them right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. And our health facility, oh God, we're praying for our health workers. Lift them, I lift them up before you right now. And God, I'm praying for our sons and our daughters, uh, those who are being led to go in a uh, room and a a dying for the path. I pray, God, you would allow us to be in the, in the path, to be in a position to say something or do something that will turn them around so above all to you. And dear God, we pray that thou will just strengthen us. Bless us now, God. Come now in the person of the Holy Spirit. Touch our spiritual ears that we can hear, eyes that we can see, our hearts that we can Accept what you have to say to us on this day. We ask you, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in our sight. O oh Lord, you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus, the Christ's name, we ask it all. Amen and amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we want to get right into our discussion on today as we started last week about five things that I want to do better, say that, five things I want to do better in this new year. Five things I want to do better in this new year. Uh, we uh focusing in on Philippians chapter 4, verses 6, and uh, we read it on last week. I uh, said, do not worry, don't worry about anything. Uh, the Revised Standard says, has no anxiety about anything and so we dealt with last week is that i want i want to do better in my worrying area i don't want to worry about anything i want i want i want i don't want, I don't want to live in 2024 in a uh, a state of anxiety worry that's not healthy for my body, I, I don't want. I don't want to worry. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not good for me. It's de detrimental. So we dealt with. Don't worry. And so we're not going to worry. We got to replace that worry with something else. Yeah, we got. Uh, uh, we, we. I know worry is a part of our daily uh, living, and so. Um, so this is the second thing that I want to deal with that I, I, that I want to do in 2024 is that I'm going to pray, underline that word, I'm going to pray about everything. I'm not going to worry about everything. And so since I, 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 since, since, since I, I, I got to deal with um, uh, uh, situations in, in life that what causes me anxiety, that is causing me uh, to worry, is that I got to learn <clears throat> that uh, worry can be replaced. Worry can be minimized, okay? And, and uh, either, either I'm going to worry, I got, I got a choice, 
Or I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to, I'm going to pray. I'm going to trust God. Either I'm going to worry. I can't do both. I can't, I can't worry and pray. I can't, I can't worry and trust God at the same time. It is that either I'm going to stop worrying and start praying. Because prayer, prayer leads me uh, uh, to not worry, not pay attention, more, putting more attention on what causing the anxiety, what causing me to worry. And, and you, usually if I'm worrying about something, is that that's evidence that prayer is absent. <laughs> or are you listening to me? That if I'm going to worry, if I'm going to have a, 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 a panic uh, a, a, a attack, uh, a, a constant panicking and worrying, uh, uh, is that that's evidence that prayer is not present. Is, is that is that if, if if you worry all the time that's uh, that that alarm that uh, built in automatically built in ought to uh, give you a signal that you're not praying it's just that simple that if you worry all the time if you worry is that that's I, that that's a signal that your prayer life is out of whack. If you are praying and still worrying, what, what that what that signal, Pastor? Uh, I'm glad you asked. You're not trusting God. Just just that simple. If you're praying and you're still worrying. That means you're not trusting God. I think I need to say it again. Pastor, I'm praying, but I'm still worried. The only conclusion that I can come up with that I can tell you is that you're not trusting God. You and I cannot trust God and be worried at the same time. It's the same way it is about darkness and light, they cannot exist at the same time. Either one got one got to give up, give up to the other. Darkness and light can't exist at the same time. And so it is about worry and prayer. If you're still praying and you're still worrying, does that mean you're not trusting God? Because one of them is going to one of them is going to override the other. So if you pray but still worry, then you must ask yourself, are you really trusting God? Or are you just going through the motion? Prayer is very essential in each believer's life. You cannot have a authentic relationship with the Lord. You cannot have a strong relationship with the Lord and don't have a strong prayer life. Uh, this, this idea, this concept of prayer, and it always just uh, simply uh, says prayer is talking, talking to God. Communicating with God. Um, that's something that actually really started in the, uh, in the, in, in, in the uh, first chapter of Genesis. That this is something that, that God himself developed. That's, this is something that God himself put in play. If you ever, if you ever go to that uh, first chapter of Genesis, and I read it when you get a chance, um, I think verses 26 uh, through 28. Matter of fact, when you look at that entire uh, first chapter, is that uh, those first six days is that we see God doing something. 
is, is that uh, take, take a moment and look at it. I'm, I'm not going to go through it all today, but, but I, want you to, I want you to just follow up and then follow uh, up with what I'm going to say when you read it. Is that, is that something amazing when you're dealing with the creation account? Is that is that um, when God created light, and when he when 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 he created the earth, the land, the water, is that the um, each day you notice at the end of that day is that God says it's good. He blessed it and declared that it was good. Uh, then I think Moses added said morning. And, um, and, 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 and evening. Then it goes on to the set of talking about the second day, what he did when he when, 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 um, made the animals, uh, the insects, the fowls are there. Everything he did is that he said it's good and very, very good. And then goes on. But notice something different about when he got ready, when, when he made. Um, uh, uh, male and female we created Adam and Eve is that uh, immediately after he created Adam and Eve he does something different that he did not do to any of all his creations when you, when you notice in verses 26 and uh, through 28 is that it says, God bless them. When you go back up to verse 26, it said, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Notice he did something different with this creation that he did not do with the other creation. Moses says, God blessed them and said to them, uh, uh, be fruitful, increase and numbers multiply, fill the earth to do it, rule over it. What's your point, Pastor? The point that I'm making is that out of all this creation, this is the first instance that we see God talking. He, he, he did not talk to any of his other creation, but when he got to man, when he got to woman, when he got to male and female, is that he specifically Tell, he talks to them and gives them direction, gives them some order. I want you to understand that. He talks to them. He did not do this with any of his other creation. He did not look at it, read it closely, study it closely. With all this creation, is that he did not do this. Yes, he created everything. And you ask the question, why did God talk to them? Why did God talk to them? Even though uh, Adam and Eve, even though the male and female, however you want to look at it, is that they were created perfect. They had a perfect relationship with God. But it was something missing that God had to make sure that they understood. What was it? I'm glad you asked. They could not figure out life on their own. Man was created to depend upon God. And what God had to do to mankind is he had to talk to them to explain to them who they were. That's first of all, who they were. This is good teaching here. Who they were. Second, what they were to do. with their lives
Thirdly, that dependence upon God. God had to explain to them, God had to talk, teach them who they were. What they was created to do. And the reason why they needed help with this is because they was human. And whenever you and I fail to talk to God, is that that's telling God we don't need him. So the more you and I talk to God, the more we tell God how dependent we are of him. Uh, I think the brother of Jesus, James, uh, helps us out in this talking relationship between us and God. Uh, in that uh, fifth chapter of James, read it when you get a chance. It tells us just how powerful when we have a good, strong prayer life. And that verse 16, are uh, you there, of the fifth chapter of James, it says that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous avail much. Listen to what he said. He said the, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Just like we as believers have to God our testimony, we, we, have, to, we have to make sure that we stay uh, 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 as a, a credible witness because the only way that sinners is going to be saved is through our witnesses. So along with us, God and our um, our, our, our testimony as being a reliable witness is that we also uh, must uh, make sure that when it comes down to our prayer life, that um, our prayer life uh, 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 be a strong life. We, 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 want, we want to make sure that what we say and our conduct and how we conduct ourselves uh, 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 lines up together. We don't want, we don't, otherwise, what, what, what you said, Pastor, we don't want what comes out of our lips contradicts our action. We don't want to pray to God, talk to God, and then we don't believe, first of all, in the God who we're talking to. Is that we don't want our lifestyle to contradict what comes out of our mouth. That's what he's talking about. That's what, that's what, that's what James talks about as, as far as he's fictional fervent prayers. Is that, is that I, want, I want my lifestyle to line up with what comes out of my mouth. Because James tells us in that fifth chapter of uh, James, that God would not hear our prayer if sin, that's what we got, we got to learn how to deal with that sin problem, that sin nature that is in us, is on the thorn of our lives. Because we can, we can, we can, we can, we can pollute, we can contaminate our conversation or the words that come out of our mouth out of doubt, out of fear. 
Yes. Uh, it's, it, we're not arguing about, Pastor, I come to church every uh, time the door is open and 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 I I I, I believe in going to church. I believe in, in in giving the Lord the first. I believe in doing this. I believe in doing unto others as as I would want them to do unto me. But you also have to be mindful of. Um, Making sure that what comes out of our mouth, the words that comes out of our mouth and the way we live, if, if, if we live in, in a state of worry, living in a state of doubt. Is that there's a possibility that God is not hearing our prayer. And according to the word of God, is that when God does not hear our prayer, is that we are just wasting up oxygen. We're just wasting up time. Your prayer has to have value. I may want to write that down. Your prayer has to have value. Your prayer has to have meaning. It has to have substance. It's not about how long we pray. Because the Bible uh, speaks. Even Jesus had a reputation of uh, uh, being a, a long prayer. Yes, Solomon uh, uh, had a, a, a reputation of um, having a long prayer life. Daniel, when you search scriptures, there's nothing wrong with praying, having long prayers. But uh, what, what, uh, what, uh, what, 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 counts is how strong and how sincere uh, your prayer is. Because a prayer is not, um, shouldn't be something that uh, is uh, centered around or uh, based upon emotion. Uh, prayer, prayer is not something that should be based upon just a uh, routine where you rehearse or where you re rehearse or repeat phrases. No, yes, sometimes uh, uh, repetitional prayer is in order, but, 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 but then if uh, it becomes a place where you have repeated the prayer, that especially when you're doing it in public, that everybody know what you're going to say, is that uh, that that's a possibility that uh, you just uh, wasting time? You just uh, ain't got nothing else to do but um, just got words, and and that we have to make sure that 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 type of prayer, uh, is, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we are sincere in our hearts because we have to keep in mind. Who we talking to? We talking to God. God, God, God want to hear how sincere. God want to know how what we in tune with Him. Sometimes we forget who we talking to. We talking to God. Prayer, prayer is based upon sincerity and it's out of our hearts. So when you examine, when you look at your prayer, your prayer life, and if you, if you see that your, prayer, your prayers are, 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 are powerless, they are paralyzed, someone said they are paralyzed, they are polluted. They just words that that uh, is uh, just out there. You just throwing words. Is that uh, you need to make sure that uh, first of all you you you're seeking God. 
And that's what Paul had to tell the church in Coloss, in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1. He said, first you must seek those things that are from above. And then Jesus picks it up in that sixth chapter of Matthew. He cautions us when we pray, don't be like a hypocrite. Don't be a pretender. She don't be like a heathen. Don't read the word and do the opposite of what the Lord requires of thee. And, and Jesus teaches that in that third chapter, the sixth chapter of Matthew, verse 63. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Our, our longing ought to be after the things of God. Seek the kingdom of God in his righteousness, and then whatever we ask, those things will be added to us. We first got to seek the kingdom of God. And then we must have faith in what we are praying for. And I think the brother of Jesus uh, helps us out in that in James chapter 1. Read it when you get a chance. Uh, verse number 8. He says, make sure that your words is not filled with doubt. Because a double-minded man, a double-minded woman is unstable in all of his ways. And like I said earlier, is that, is that, is that worry and anxiety and prayer cannot coexist at the same time. One is going to override the other. So whenever you find yourselves worrying, that means that you're, you're doing less praying. Then if you're going to pray according to the word of God, is that you must surrender your will to God's will. And Jesus had to teach us that when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. When doubt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a fear is, is one of uh, God's endowments. Yes, we all going to have moments of fear. But uh, that's a lesson there that Jesus teaches us is that when fear uh, 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 tries to override our faith and our will in God is that the best antidote to handle fear, the best antidote to handle worry, the best antidote, the best medicine to, 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 to handle the uh, 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 anxiety is prayer. And we notice what Jesus did. He went a little bit further into the garden and he prayed until blood began to fall from him. I mean, I mean sweat began to fall from him like drops of blood. Okay? So we got to learn how to surrender our will to his will. Don't get mad because God may not answer your prayer the way you want him to answer it. <laughs> don't, don't get upset with God. Because it may, not, it, may, it, may, it may not be God's will to answer or to do what you want him to do. So I want to wrap it up by, 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 by reminding us is that this year, this day, is that you need to tell yourself, I'm going to commit myself, starting right now, to pray about everything. No matter how big, no matter how small it may be, is that I'm going to pray. Because when we read in Philippians chapter 4, it tells us we, that there's a command there to pray about everything. And I believe that everything means just what it says, everything. So I want to encourage you, I want to, uh, even myself, 
And I, I, will you join in with me in committing uh, yourself to praying in the fashion that the Bible, that the Lord requires of us, is that when we do pray, is pray in faith. Pray in faith. Trust God. And, it would, and, it would, and we would learn to do that. We, we learn to practice praying to God about everything. You're talking about having a prosperous year. Is that that would happen? God bless you and God keep you. Our prayer. Tune in with us on next week as we continue to uh, deal with the subject five things that I want to do uh, in this new year. I want to I want to change my priorities. I want to I want to have a better year than I've had uh, uh, since I've been with the Lord. So I want I want to. Uh, Continue looking at this uh, fourth chapter of Philippians, uh, verse number six. Let us pray, gracious and all wise God, our Father. We thank you for the privilege of being able to talk to you. And God, we thank you for giving us. We want to take advantage of you giving us permission to call you, to talk to you whenever uh, our sp spirit man urges us, lead us in order to talk to you, God. We just love you that we can talk to you and we can't talk to nobody else. God, you know, you know better than we know the trials and the tribulation that we must deal with while we're here in this world. God, we thank you that we can be of good cheer because you sent your only begotten son who came to be a sacrifice, came to, to help us, and we just pray, God, that you continue to give us the boldness, continue to trust you, lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, help us to, to trust you. Thank you, dear God, for this prayer. Bless us now. In Jesus, the Christ name, we ask it all. Amen and amen.